Good afternoon and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by Ice Life Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoakum. I'm an associate here on the Ice Life Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is poultry technologies. On today's call, we're joined by Imtiaz Shamsuddin, CEO of Phlox. Phlox is transforming the way farmers manage uh, their flocks and houses using proven technology, including 24-7 visibility via CCTV camera, on-premise computing hardware to deliver AI-powered insights and sensors that can improve clustering, mortality, FCR, ammonia levels, and more. It all comes together in a business intelligence platform that alerts and insights to farmers and decisions to support data to industry stakeholders. Now, each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We have invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Flox's market. You're potential customers for, for Flox's products and services. You've built a company similar to Flox, or uh, you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities Flox may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question um, to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer, and while that poll is running, we are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information to help flocks find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. You, are, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. And finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce Imtiaz, CEO of Flox. Uh, Imtiaz, please feel free to take it away. Great. Thank you for having me, guys. Uh, we're Flox, the healthy chicken company. We're backed by uh, U.S. investors who are in series A uh, investors behind the corners like Square, Flexport. Let me tell you about chickens. So there's uh, 66 billion chickens that we eat every year living in uh, what we call the chicken houses or chicken sheds. And there's about 300,000 of those houses and sheds. And what Flox does is we live inside these chicken houses and we work to improve the health and welfare of these birds. And we do that by creating actionable alerts and, and sort of data for the farmers and the processors and the integrators. As we do that, we create lots of benchmark data. We spit out lots of benchmark data from these, from these houses. And that benchmark data is valuable up and down the supply chain. So we're talking as early as the feed companies, the genetics companies, the health companies, and all the way down to consumers like you, where there's an interest in trust and traceability. And that's really what we focus on. We want our vision is to try to improve that trust and trace. One very important point, I don't know how much of you guys will know about chicken farmers, but they do make money. There's, uh, they're largely unsubsidized directly. And um, a single chicken farmer in, uh, in Europe, but similar to the US, will with six houses is doing about $3 million sales. But each chicken farmer has a lot of pressure on them from the supply chain to do better when it comes to chicken health. So this comes from the likes of the integrators, like the big companies, uh, Tyson's Cargill in the UK, it's Moy Park, Two Sisters, and the rest of the Europe. There's, there's a number of other players like that. They're oligopolic. They're consolidating. They're buying each other out. And there's a lot of pressure on margin. And so they need chicken health to be stable and improve because it helps them with margin and, 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 and better operations across their many, many different farms. With the retailers, it matters a lot because they're getting a lot of consumer sentiment pressure. And there's also a need to be able to plan better in terms of what they're going to get from these farms. And regulatory is massive right now in Europe, it's a lot more very greenhouse gas focused with a welfare strong environment element. In the US, it's more to do with things like antibiotic usage or no antibiotics at all, and also welfare uh, and to some extent greenhouse gases. But it's just really hard for farmers to do anything about this because they don't really know what the birds are doing inside the sheds. They don't have a lot of visibility in what's happening inside the chicken sheds right now. I'll tell you a little bit about us. So I'm Imtia Shams, the CEO of Flox. I'm a partner in a venture builder. We have built five companies in deep tech and AI in the last five years, two ag tech companies. I've decided to be the CEO of Flox because it's a sort of problem I really wanted to solve and I wanted to knuckle down on. So I sort of decided to leave my venture building days and, and focus on Flox. My CSO, Luke, was behind Hazy, which is one of our companies, which won the $1 million Microsoft AI prize and it's now 
partly owned by Microsoft. Nils, my CTO, is just working behind me. He founded Anonymox. It's a cybersecurity company 11 years ago from his bedroom in university. I built it to 60 million downloads with his business partner. Both of them now work with us. And uh, he's also an investor in the business. And Andrew Maunder, our chairman, he uh, sold his chicken processing company to the largest player in the UK. And now he is one of the chairs of the RSPCA Animal Welfare Working Group. We have a number of other advisors who've sold companies, who've run ag finance banks and things like that, who are all invested in making sure we do well. So today our chicken shed will be walked for about 15 minutes a day. And this is not enough. You know, a chicken, single chicken shed might have 30,000 or 50,000 or even 100,000 birds and 15 minutes a day per walk is just not enough. They're also grabbing the birds and weighing my hand. They'll do about 50 birds a week out of 5,000. There is automated scales. They're inaccurate after about day 22 because the big dominant birds sell them. There is some sensing data like temperature and humidity, but it just doesn't talk to anything and it's very unrepresentative. What we're doing is using uh, cameras and AI to give 24 seven visibility on what the birds are doing. And we then layer cake this with additional algorithms that provide alerts and things like that. One of these algorithms is weighing. So we can weigh using just cameras 50,000 birds a second at a 97% accuracy. But this is just one example of what are the algorithms that we have commercially available. And connected to this is the sensors that farmers already have or we install. And that just is a lot richer because it all talks to everyone. Here's an example of one of our algorithms. This is stitching 12 cameras in here, in the shed, stitch image. The, the moving chickens here are actually very downgraded quality. The quality we get is 4K, but we've downgraded it for the presentation. We use no custom hardware. Everything we do hardware-wise is off the shelf. You can buy it from Amazon yourself. In fact, all of the installs are now done by the companies that we work with or CCTV installers. All we do is focus on the algorithmic side, which is all done on-prem. We leverage advances because of our team's background in autonomous vehicles, because we built a company, couple of companies in AI that work within that sector. And on-prem processing, similarly, we've worked in on-prem stuff and advanced sensing, which our, especially our university partners are very good at. How we are entering the market, we work via the farmers through distributors. We have done it directly, but it's, it's not the speed that, you know, we, we're not gonna be able to scale easily farm by farm, but distributors already have those relationships and they make money on the CCTV installs. So they kind of are incentivized to do this essentially for free for us. And we've already got clients that way. We, we, what we want to do really is work via the integrators and retailers, as well as the agri supply and agri finance genetics companies. The data can then get straight to the regulators and consumers who will not pay us for it, but they're interested in this. And, and as regulations increase, we expect that to be more and more important. On that front, so SaaS is how we are as a business. We don't take, we don't want to take revenues from the hardware installs, that's other people. What we do is every year we take a cut of the value we create we can, because we can benchmark ourselves and the data sales that we're also doing, we haven't been able to sell any data yet because we don't have enough data, but that's where we want to get to as well. Uh, it's a very large market in broilers for us. We take a cut of the value we can benchmark and our expectation on that is by year, by about year five, it's an $8 billion AR market just in broilers. Eggs is equivalently large. It has higher margins than broilers for us. Uh, and we're entering eggs right now. And we're ignoring also turkeys and ducks with that number. We had a pre-seed round last year. We built uh, our product, it's called Netflox, and we patented it in the US. We've now flipped the company over to the US. We've got revenue for about 26 houses and we're wow. just signing over some very large contracts. We've got a whole bunch of development contracts from governments and other companies who want us to solve this problem. We have quite large deals in the upside, including with some very big US players and in Asia too. Our plan, we've just, uh, we're just, I think, a day away from, a day or two away from closing our seed round. In fact, legals are signed. We're just getting over the money and stuff. All our, all these investors are US investors. They're all deep tech AI investors. And the plan is to get to a thousand houses in the next two years um, with a huge scale up plan in the US. So we've done quite a bit in Europe, but we really want to get to the US now. And I'm moving there physically. So where can iSelect help us? It's literally that, the US side. 
Uh, we need clients in the U.S. and Canada. I have one client at the moment, quite a large one in the U.S. that we're uh, talking to at a deep level. One of our customers in Europe is owned by a very large U.S. company, but other than that, we don't have many contacts. So we really need what we've been giving it in terms of talking to the big integrators, feed and genetics companies who are interested in our data, but also interested in us upselling their services because we can benchmark if one vaccine is doing better than another, that kind of thing. Um, and also large farms. So some, sometimes collectives in America are quite large. And so we want to talk to them. I'm going to physically be based between Buffalo, New York and Austin, Texas, because we're funded by governments uh, in the US as well. And so I have to be there. Our investors who have come in are all AI investors. And so for our Series A, we're really thinking about having at least one ag tech investors because we've never taken ag tech VC money. We've always rejected it. We've always wanted to focus on the enterprise AI side. Um, we're also looking for advisors in the US. I've just got one who's come in and is an angel. He's taken his business to a uh, 4 billion IPO in, in the NASDAQ. And I want more people like that who can really help us think about both yeah, in the US when it comes to ag, when it comes to uh, health, animal health, and also just who, like him, taking companies to a large size. That's it from us. And I'll take questions from you guys. Yeah, really excited to talk further to the iSelect network. Wayne, well, thank you so much. And, and congratulations on all the progress. Congrats on the move to the US. Lots of exciting things in the future for you and, and for the company. Um, as alluded to, if, if you're in the audience and you have a question, the best way to ask your questions is to type it directly in the Q&A box. But I'll kick things off with sort of, well, the, the, the initial question I have is, as you know, we've looked at a lot of stuff in the, the animal management space and agriculture, and my perception is a lot more tech to date that's been focused on managing cattle and, and pork. Why is chicken? Why, why does it seem that chicken has potentially like sort of lagged behind? And it's been, especially given the fact that a lot of consumption it just continues to grow worldwide, um, and will continue to grow worldwide. And, and when you look at the pure environmental footprint of, of chicken consumption versus you know your red meats of the world, it's lower. Bigger opportunity there. So why why do you think there hasn't been as many solutions commercialized, or have there been, and we're just not as aware of them? No, you're absolutely right. There have been things in chicken when it comes to genetics and, and feed innovation, but as you say, nothing in management. And, and you're absolutely right in pigs and, 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 and cattle and dairy, you see a lot more machine vision style things and robotics. I think the reason is simple. It's very hard to make machine vision work for poultry farming because you're talking about flock level information. You're talking about 50,000 animals in an on-prem facility with seven sheds and you're trying to get that data back into the mothership and then distribute that through yeah. your supply chain. Right. When you're doing individual animals, it's very different. There's uh, lots and lots of uh, traditional models you can use. But that's a bit of a moat for us, a small moat. For, it's, it's, a, it's a moat that will get smaller with time as machine vision gets more commoditized. But it's because of our background. We come from that kind of autonomous vehicle, automation in factories, machine vision background. We're not actually traditionally ag people. And what that means is when we've surrounded ourselves with ag people who tell us what we need to build, we have a bit more capability to build it than someone who's using kind of more off the, off the shelf models. This is particularly the case with autonomous vehicles because you know you can prototype stuff with chicken, but making that nice and commercially available is very, very different. It's very difficult. And Nils, my CTO, is kind of the reason we can do that, to be, to be honest. It's not me. But I think that's the big advantage we have. But it also makes it a really hard problem. Yeah. We last week, last week we had a we had a company on called Cook's Venture that I imagine you're familiar with. Um, is a, a leader in, in regenerative, regenerative farming practices for poultry production, mostly outdoor types of production and sort of going on, moving on to this trend of consuming higher quality meats and with a, with a better environmental footprint and a better, better ethical footprint around animal welfare. Uh, yeah. How, how can, how can flock, is flocks, is flocks a part of that story and how, and how do you guys how do you guys fit into that as, as trends? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the person you see on this slide, Stuart, he's 
he's a free range farmer and he was our first customer he was actually our first investor he was our he's our first commercial deployment and so half of our chicken sheds at the moment in the uk are free range where it's it's that that figure is changing very drastically as we move towards the big processors but at the moment it's still free range and that's because free range is this complicated problem where actually they're not better necessarily in terms of bird welfare at the moment it's very hard to validate yeah. But with better tooling, they can be a lot better than conventional farming. The other problem free range has is that as you go from free range to organic, your labor costs skyrocket. So you can make margin money on your margin, but your ability to, to scale that operation up is almost impossible at, at some level. And we're seeing this, you know, we're seeing lots and lots of organic farmers who are doing well, but when it comes to raising money from banks or getting lending to grow their operations, they're finding it very difficult because their numbers just don't stack up when it comes to labor scale up. Now we can help because as, as you do more free range, the only way to track, you have to track the birds more in order to manage them because they're going outside and inside. There's more diseases, there's more risks, risk factors. And so we, we think that that free range and organic story, we can help increase that difference between free range, organic and conventional until the industry moves more in that direction. Another quick answer also is the sheds are getting bigger right now. Why are they getting bigger and they're packing more birds in? Because they can't manage the sheds, they, they just can't. If you, but what you want to make more money is to make them smaller with fewer birds, it's more biosecure, but you can only do that with tech. So we're doing a little bit of work actually with companies a bit like Cook's Farm, but in Europe, where we're trying to build like the world's best chicken sheds, caked full of our technology uh, to prove that we can improve like labor costs associated with better farming. That's great. And then maybe digging a little bit into the system itself and where your main value drivers are. Can you speak a little bit right now to when, when somebody plays the flock system where sort of the no brainer is for them and from a, from a savings perspective when they think about adoption? Yeah. There's three things that the customers bite into in terms of immediate value. The first is the fact that they can benchmark what things are happening in the chicken shed. Even at the moment, the benchmarks happen after the birds are dead. So you've got 35, 36 to 48, 42 days. And then the processes at the end know what's actually happening. Otherwise they have to call up the farms and the farmers give them weights for 50 birds or something. What we can do is get you that data from day one for the whole length of that flock. That's a big one for the in pro integrators. The second thing is their ability to meet some of the pressing needs from the retail. This is a big problem, particularly in Europe, UK and America, where the retailers are putting pressure on them to do better when it comes to the welfare of the birds, when it, proving that to them, etc., because it's uh, it's an oligopoly. So you know, they're competing against each other for reasonably thin margins, and they're really interested in using flocks and saying to the retailers, "Hey, like we've got the system that allows us to solve your problem. Please pick us." Obviously, at some point, we want to be with all of these companies, so it becomes a standard rather than the special sauce. But it becomes something you have to do. The third thing is environmental emissions. Footprinting is becoming almost mandatory in Europe at the moment. It's just going through the European Commission. You'll have to footprint at some point if you want to make any money. And we can footprint because we know what's the, what the birds are doing. We know what is happening emissions-wise inside the sheds and outside. And so we can give them that data. And they're really interested in that, particularly in Europe. I haven't tested if that's the case in the US, but I imagine regulation is going to come in for that as well. With yeah. animal farming. Yeah, super clear. Thanks, MTS. Well, Given that you already presented the ask, this is really clear. Really appreciate you doing that. Thanks again for joining us today and uh, congratulations on all your progress to date. I might also like to thank the audience for, for participating today. I'm um, either now or, or, or later on the, um, on the record. Again, we host agri-food conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central time. Uh, if you want to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. A replay will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. New viewers can register for agri-food conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. If you'd like to learn more, join us next week. We'll be joined by Yehuda El Ram, CEO of Exit, a company developing a new technology that enables sex detection of chick embryos immediately after the eggs are laid. MTS, thank you so much again for your time. Really appreciate it. And everyone have a great rest of your day. Thank you.